but this was really, really heavy on my heart. And I wanted to go ahead and say something now so that I don't forget to say it later because I'm going to pick up my son. He's got practice. I got Bible study. You all know the life of a mom. We're just going to make sure that we can get this point out today. All right. Because I think this is going to help you all. And really what I want to talk about real quick is how everybody's talking about Giving Tuesday, Giving Tuesday, Giving Tuesday. How many of you all Wait, that's probably not a, a good question to ask, huh? <laughs> I was going to say, how many of you are tired of all these Giving Tuesday things? They're all like Giving Tuesday, but half of them are like veiled attempts to get you to buy something, right? So today what I want to talk about is how can you give when you're broke? Because I really, really don't want you to give anything today unless you have it. Everybody's got emails with their hands out and some of them, some of them are really legit. And I think it's a great campaign. I mean, come on. I love the idea that people who don't normally give are giving on Giving Tuesday because somebody coined the phrase Giving Tuesday. Like, I think that's fantastic. All right. The thing is for me is that most of my clients are big hearted people who want to change the world. They have this calling to make things better. They want to help people, empower children, save communities. And because of that, we find ourselves in situations where we overextend and overgive. Yes, I said it over give. Many of my clients came to me because they found themselves deep in debt and didn't know if there was a way out. They worked so hard all those years and they were afraid they were going to have nothing to leave for their children. And then I get in there and look at their finances. And you know what I see a lot of times? I see that they have basically given away their wealth, given away their children's future mismanaged sure like most of us did that when we were young right failed to invest i mean a lot of us didn't do that either when we were young right a lot of people in my age bracket i am a little older than i look we grew up thinking we'd work for a company 30 years and get a nice pension and social security right but most of the people who come to me in debt and not everyone does but of the ones who do come to me in debt most of them are manipulated into giving guilt tripped into giving because how dare they work hard and make a decent life for themselves? Oh, whoa, they were preached into giving some of them because, you know, they, they, they were, you know, you got to You can't beat God giving. The more you give, the more he gives back to you. I mean, that's practically a scripture, right? It's not exactly how, it, how it's written. <laughs> some of these people that come to me, they were stolen from and, and not even by strangers on the Internet or the street. Right. But by family members who felt entitled to their earnings. And then some of them were scammed. Oh, it breaks my heart, y'all. The women who come to me having been scammed by some guy who pretended to love them or the parents whose children are trying to get set them out to pasture. The kids have their eyes on an inheritance. And so they spend all these people spend all their time and money buying gifts for the kids and the grandkids trying to really, at the end of the day, buy a relationship. So what do you do? What do you do when you want to give? You got a heart to give, but you don't have the money. Well, what you what 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 do you do when you want to help, but helping actually hurts you? When giving money is stealing away from your future, from your kid's ability to go to college, what do you do and still have that heart that wants to give? Well, there are a couple things that you can do. We're going to talk about them right now. Hopefully, hopefully we're going to talk about all of them before I have to go get this child, right? Because uh, I don't need the teachers to be mad at me being late. <laughs> um, first, first, you can look for ways to crowdsource to raise the funds you need. And I, and I did this and I did this uh, for a long time and I still do it on occasion because I am a firm believer in staying within the guardrails of my spend plan. My spend plan allows me to be free and flexible and have fun and live in the moment because if the money's in there and I get excited about helping someone, then I help them. You know, and if there's nothing left in the giving or community buckets, then I don't. It's that simple. I plan it out. I plan out that I'm going to spend X amount of dollars blessing people, supplying local nonprofits, things like that. And if an opportunity comes that isn't reflected in my spend plan, then I know it's not for me. Some of you, you've been being the blessing for so long that others around you lose the opportunity to grow both spiritually and personally because they never have to give. They never have to cook for church because you sweep in and save the day every time. They never have to volunteer at the shelter because, the sh because you're there all day long. 
You know, uh, one of the biggest hurts of my divorce wasn't just the $800,000 of debt. And it wasn't being shunned by people who I later found out knew my ex had done me wrong. Another really, really, really big hurt was when I withdrew from so many of the things that I was volunteering for. And I stopped building everybody's websites for free. And I stopped volunteering my time. And I stopped teaching for free because I needed to spend my time working my side hustles to put food on my table and pay down that debt, right? I only had so much energy and, and, and the spirit moved in me to start releasing myself from these commitments that were sapping away at my time and energy and money. And after the first two, oh, they quickly found y'all, not only found, but found and paid somebody else to run their international websites. What I had been breaking my back to do for them for free, I realized I've been selling myself too short. And those people were happy to take my free labor, take my money, take my goodwill, take my canvassing. But what I couldn't do for them, they replaced me in a hot second. You hear me what I said? They didn't even let the phone cool down, y'all, before they dialed somebody else, got a commitment, and sent them money for what I was doing for free. And then they didn't even help me. Like, they didn't even give me grace, right? Like, one of them, one of them just kicked me to the curb. The other one badmouthed me for, 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 for not helping them for free anymore. I was like, what? Now, look, look, maybe you're friendlier than me, right? Right? You're, you're probably friendlier than me. Most people are, right? <laughs> You, you you probably have people around you that would really help you out if you found yourself, uh, you know, in $800,000 of debt facing divorce and being a single military mom, right? Like, 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 you know, if you're a give, give, giver, then it's probably more likely that you'll have what happened to me after that car accident. Miss Independent over here, always helping people, never needing help. And when I need help, they rallied around me the first couple of months. And then after that, I was too needy. My son broke his wrist. My husband's in another state. I need someone to watch the baby while Philip goes into surgery. And people, no kidding, people, no kidding, texting me. You're too needy. This is the last straw. I'm done helping you. I, I've got, I've got my own life. And I'm reading these, right? I'm sitting in the hospital reading these. And I've got one kid screaming because he's in pain and the meds haven't kicked in yet. And the other kid is screaming because his brother is screaming. And these are my friends. I was so independent that I, that I, um, that I didn't build around me a support system of people that actually would help and care long term. Now, I will admit there are some friends and I probably overtaxed that relationship because they kept my son so much for me. So, you know, that's my fault right there. But, you know, someone I worked with but didn't even really know well took Cubby for me. And I really felt awkward asking, but I didn't know what else to do. And the crazy thing was she was in a Bible study at that moment sharing with the group about how she was looking for opportunities to be a nicer person. Well, we never developed a, a deep friendship or anything, but I'll never forget her kindness. And if you do everyone for everybody in your life, chances are you've probably attracted into your life a whole lot of people who enjoy taking but don't give. And if that's you today, the first step to freedom is really to stop. Stop giving so much. Take a step back and see where you really are needed and valued. Does that mean you'll never give again? Well, of course not. I spent my day yesterday. It was a glorious day, y'all. I worked with a hardship client, which I really don't do much anymore because most of my, most of them, by the time they get to two to three months, they, they, they back out. I've put a lot, I've invested a lot of time and energy into them and, and, and they don't even realize it behind the screens and uh, the, the, the scenes. And if, uh, if, you, if you make a six month commitment, then I, then I know you're going to have results because you got to get over that three month hump, right? But this lady's different. She's been scammed in a huge way and, and she's been doing the work. So it was really a joy to work with her. And then I drove to the Metroplex to get my, my earbuds fixed and uh, well replaced. And uh, I spent the rest of the afternoon shopping the blessed little girls and thinking about all the things that I bought them that I would have loved growing up, but I could never afford and all the things that will help them increase their self-confidence. It was just a lovely day. And I have the freedom of time, space, money, and energy to be able to spend a day like that. But first, I had to spend some time hustling and working and investing and beans and rice in it. See, everybody wants to have the fun, but any athlete knows you got to put the work in. You got to get those reps in. You got to get the financial reps in so you can have the payoff later. And when you give what you don't have, this is what I tell my son sometimes, when you give what you don't have, this is like playing Madden all season. You don't ever go to practice, but then you expect it to make you QB1, the first playoff game when you finally show up. It's an empty promise. 
And when those bills come after you've been give, give, given, and you don't have anything to pay your bills, you can't take care of your family, you feel empty and guilty and sad and worthless. And then what do we do about it? We go volunteer. Oh, I got to go get my son. We volunteer. We give to somebody else. And for a moment, we feel amazing. We feel like God has called us. Or we're doing what God has called us to do, right? And you might be, but my Bible says the Lord's blessings don't come with a curse attached. So if a curse comes attached to that blessing, then it's not the Lord. I want you to feel amazing no matter what. I want you to feel amazing after that bill comes, knowing you had it to give. So I, I was going to talk about what to do when you don't have money to give and you want to give. Um, we're going to come back to that. Okay. We're going to come back to that. I'm going to finish that after I get my, my son and go to this ribbon cutting and um, before I teach Bible study. So uh, hold that thought. Give me a do over. We'll be back this evening. Y'all take care and be blessed. I am back. <laughs> that is, has got to be the shortest I've ever made it through that 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 line ever. So uh, the pickup line for my son. So for those of you who didn't catch the earlier video, I had what I thought was a really quick message, and then it kind of turned into a little mini rant about you know people manipulating us or guilt tripping us or or whatever it is scamming us out of our money and today being giving tuesday i find that giving is one of the the biggest the biggest conflicts for many of the people that are in my audience and so and so uh just to summarize for those of you who weren't part of that video um the the come some of the things that i talked about were you know when you we go to church and they tell us give till it hurts or you can't be god giving or if you give he'll give back to you uh sometimes we come from families that are less advantaged and we work hard and pull ourselves out of that and then people feel entitled to our money or they feel entitled to the success that we've got even though they didn't do the work you know and then sometimes I don't think I said it quite like that. I think I was actually probably a lot nicer in my first video when I tried to say that. I probably didn't say it like that. Uh, but then you also have situations where we ourselves just don't feel good about ourselves unless we're helping somebody else. And so it really sets up this strange dichotomy of we help somebody, we feel really good about ourselves, and then the bills come, we've overextended ourselves, we've done something to upset our family. Like I was the queen of that. I was the queen of, I was going to volunteer and help everybody else and had no time left over for my husband, right? That used to be who who I was and my ex-husband. You know, one of the good things I learned from being married to him, right? Uh, one, of the, one of those good things was he was like, you keep giving to everybody else, but you don't give any of your time to me. And that was very early on in my first marriage. And I was like, wow, I didn't even realize I had that personality. And that personality wasn't just because I was called to change people, change the world, change, equip God's people, because I'm called to do all those things. But what was really was going on is I didn't feel good inside of me. And so a lot of times people who give, 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 give to the exclusion of the things that they need to do to take care of their family and, and, and their future, that's really what's underlying it. And I don't ever want to discount the value of helping because sometimes to pull yourself out of a rut, it's, it's helpful to help somebody else, okay? So so I don't want anybody to hear what I'm not saying today, but the thing is, the Lord's blessings, they don't come with a curse attached. And if you help and you're a blessing and you feel like this and that is a blessing and there's a curse that comes afterward, and there's a dis you know that sadness and disappointment that is probably not the Lord. I want us to be in a position that knowing that we were able to give and give freely and without strings attached and without, um, the, 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 the negative emotions that come later, okay? So what do you do? What do you do? If you didn't get a chance to watch it, I think I was much more eloquent in the first video than me trying to summarize it just now. Uh, but what do you do? What do you do when you want to give, but you don't have the money? All right. One thing you can do is you can look for ways to crowdsource the funds, crowdsource to raise the funds that you need. And we see this all the time with GoFundMe, right? You also see it right now with Facebook fundraisers. Like every time I log into Facebook, it tells me, hey, we're going to match funds, pick a fundraiser, right? So things like GoFundMe, the Facebook fundraisers, any kind of effort, even doing a live video like this, you know, you tell a, cons a compelling story, people donate, and now you can give more than your spend plan allows. I actually did this last year with the Heart of Gold campaign. Some of you might remember. Every year, our school has a heart of gold game, and they raise money to help somebody in need. And last year, it was for a young man named Frankie who suffered a really bad car accident, and it triggered me. 
because I had also suffered a really bad car accident, but I had just retired from the military and I had no idea how my money situation was going to play out. So I was going to give what I had, but I really, in my heart, I knew the years of rehab he was going to have. And I knew how long it was going to take for him to recover the use of his arms and his mind and everything. And he, he used to be a ball player. And I knew that that, 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 that medical care wasn't cheap. I mean, I had really good uh, TRICARE insurance and my medical bills, if they're stacked like this, if you, if you turn them on the side, it exactly fills a printer paper box, one of those Air Force printer paper boxes, right? And so I, I wanted to do more for him, right? But I just didn't know what my family was going to need for me. And I would have, I would have not wanted to give all the money that I had saved aside for my family to help this, this, this young man. So I did a Facebook live and we had so many donations y'all that together with what the rest of the town did, it was over $14,000 raised in a rural town in one week. See, if you have the heart, but you don't have the money, then either someone else has the money and it'll be brought to you or someone else has the skills you need to acquire the money or do the blessing or get the job done. Either way, those people, they may never get to participate in the blessing if you shortchange your family finances to bless somebody else. But if you ask, if you seek, if you knock, then you will find it. It shall be given to you. It'll come right when you want it, right when you need it. I'm encouraging you to trust the process. Trust the process and trust that if God wanted you to give the money, he would put it in your hands one way or another. Now, look, don't be superstitious about this. You're a child of God, right? You're covered in the blood, right? You don't need to be superstitious about giving. If somebody's telling you to give $100 and you don't have it, then God didn't tell them to tell you to give $100. God may have told them to say that, and you may have heard that, but if you don't have it to give, then God didn't tell them to say that for you to give it. And we could break that down all kinds of ways. I mean, God may be telling them that for the sake of somebody else who might hear it. God may be telling them to say that to prove their faith. I don't know. I just know if you don't have it, God didn't tell you to give it. Because my scripture says he accepts what you have, not what you don't have. Let me say that again for the people in the back. Scripture says, and I didn't make this up, right? Scripture says, 2 Corinthians 8 and 12. I preached on it two weeks ago at Oakdale while their pastor took, uh, took their family on a well-deserved vacation. God accepts what you have, not what you don't have. God isn't looking to see, he isn't looking to judge you according to what everybody else is doing, making their lives look all Facebook fabulous. He's looking to see what you do with what you have. See, when you when you start to feel that condemnation, that is not the Lord. That's the devil. And I'm not ashamed to say it either. If you don't have it, don't give it. All right. Now, you know, I, I'm going to I'm going to throw something out there. I know one of the things that that really um, I've been around church work for a little while now. I didn't grow up in the church, but I've been around church work for a little while. And one of the things that I notice is that sometimes they'll get out there and just pick a number. And sometimes they'll just pick a number and they'll say, you know what, we're going to set it for $100 or we're going to set it for $1,000. We're going to set it for, for whatever it is. And somebody somebody will pay it. Most people won't, but somebody will. And they wouldn't have if we didn't say it. So, you know, don't always think that what the preacher is saying, especially the TV preachers or the revival preachers or the big meeting preachers, don't always think that what they're saying is really God telling you to give. This is one of those points that I had a lot, a lot of people that come to me for financial planning, that's really, really hard for them to overcome because they're like, well, if you're getting blessed, you should give to the ministry. That's a biblical principle. If you are getting blessed, yes, you should give to the ministry. But if you don't have the money, find another way to give. All right. Find another way to be a blessing or let go and let someone else grow by letting them be the blessing. Let them get their reward by them being the blessing. All right. All right. So, so I've got a question here. Uh, this is an interesting question. Why is it important to give in the first place? And I'm not going to assume that everybody who watches my channel shares my faith. I know that everybody who watches my channel regularly accepts the fact that I have my faith and I'm unashamed of my faith and I'm going to talk about my faith. All right. Um, but it's really going to depend 
for you on on your faith because many people have a faith that that esteems giving one of the biggest reasons though if we take if we if we take faith out of the equation and i don't like to do that but if we just took faith out of the equation and stripped it down to the basic concept giving does a couple of things for the entrepreneur giving first of all keeps us grounded and a true heart of giving and being generous, it also keeps us walking in the energy of abundance, all right? Instead of scarcity. It's hard to feel like there's not enough when you're able to give. And sometimes just the act of giving makes a shift in your energy that shifts you away from the scarcity thinking, which is why people may not always, you know, you know, somebody, an entrepreneur, if an entrepreneur is doing everything right and their business is not growing, that tells me they're walking in scarcity energy, okay? And so we need to shift that. And one of the ways you shift that is by giving, was by volunteering, okay? But another thing that giving does, giving, it shifts It shifts your internal energy, your internal vibration, your internal vibe, the vibe you get from somebody, right? From fear, anxiety, worry, scarcity into love and gratitude. And those are the two highest energies. You know, we were gonna, I was going to talk about it last week with... Um, with Dr. Jonas and the conversation was so good, we never even got to it. But we have the seven levels of character. Well, most of us live in the scribble scrabble of life and we're fighting and clawing for every little bit that we have. But when we ascend up the, le the character levels to, to a life that is reflected with joy and love and grace and peace, all like, coincidentally, all the things that, you know, Philippians 4 and 8 tells us to think about and coincidentally, all the same kinds of things that you see in the fruit of the spirit, they are all the kinds of things that the people who are most successful exhibit in their lives how about that mm, all right so <laughs> so it's very important to me it's very important as an entrepreneur who wants to build wealth and stay saved it's very important for me to give and it's very important for me to help my clients learn how to give while still building wealth for today and for tomorrow so now some of us, we have no money and we know we can't help this particular thing and we can't help that particular thing, but we want to be in the room, right? Like we want to be in the mix. We want to be doing something. We want to be able to say we were a blessing, but we can't even pay our bills right now. So if that's you today, no shame, no shame, no shame and no shade, right? Uh, I, I want to tell you about something really cool that 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 came to me today. This must have been some marketing some marketing genius's idea because several people are doing it today and, and I hadn't seen this. Uh, but I love it. I'm gonna be doing it next next year. That's for sure. I don't I don't have the time today to to, to put something together today because I've got to go to a ribbon cutting. But um, what they what they're basically doing? I want you to find a business doing this is is running a free promo where you do something that benefits them for free and they bless someone else at no charge to you. Okay, so uh, some of you may have heard me talk about this guy, uh, Tom Matson. He and his uh, crew are doing this. They run an event called Strategic Alliance Live a couple times a year. And if you're looking for like joint ventures and such, that's the place to be. Like where where you can get um, high level high level speakers, performers vendors together and joint venture each other's businesses so that everybody grows. You know, I love building wealth together, right? That's really the epitome of building wealth together. And so I, I learned so much about collaborating from them and about the high level success. And you're going to see the fruit of that over the coming year, right? So guess what he's doing? Giving Tuesday only, he's waiving the $97 ticket fee for this week's conference, which actually starts tomorrow. But I mean, it's a couple of days. And even if you can only jump in one day, it's it's good. It's mind blowing. I'm telling you, the connections you will make, they will take your business to the next level. So he's waiving the $97 ticket fee. And then on top of that, he's donating the cost of the ticket to his nonprofit entrepreneur empowerment in Bangladesh to help people survive through uh, to help people thrive to entrepreneurship, which I thought was pretty cool. I was like, man, I may not have never known anything about this entrepreneurial effort in Bangladesh, but you know that's an easy win-win, right? I get I know the content is good. And I'm going to I'm going to meet people that are going to help me further my business. Some entrepreneur in Bangladesh is going to get some training to elevate their lives. I mean, that's a win win. Now, I, I put a code in the comments. I put a code in the thing and um, you can go to jjclink.com slash Sal. And there's a code surge of new buyers. It's all one word. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. All one word. No spaces. And it's really like to me, it's really a win win. It's a win for Tom. Because he's such a phenomenal salesperson that I'm sure, I mean, okay, okay. It's not like he and I talked about this, all right? But I'm sure he feels if he gets enough free people in the room, he can upsell them into his program. So it's a win for him, right? He wants the room filled. Uh, it's a win for you because you get content that's going to change your life and elevate your business. And it's a win for me. Um, 
Well, it's a win for me because I get street cred for bringing you in, right? It's a free ticket, so I don't get it. I don't get a referral fee. But I was—I meant to say <laughs> Freudian slip, right? Um, <laughs> but so it is a win for me because I get street cred, right? Um, and and I like street cred. Like I like when I brought people to the party. I like when I brought people to some high level person who's pouring into my business. I like to be the one to bring people in and be like, look, see, I'm saying thank you in the best way I know how, bringing you some new business. All right. But it's also a win for the entrepreneur who has an opportunity to take this class and do whatever they need to do that wouldn't have had otherwise. Okay. So look for those kinds of opportunities. Look for the opportunities where you can help somebody knowing what you have, which might be time, energy, audience, any of those kinds of things, right? And then they, in exchange, bless somebody else. I'm going to do something like that for sure. You know, Camp Gladiator is doing the same thing like that. I should have sent that out. Wow, I don't know what I was thinking. You know, I love my online workouts, and I love having consistent workouts no matter where I'm traveling. And I normally keep my camera off because of traveling and kids and stuff, and I don't want y'all to see me when I'm trying to, you know, all the roles and everything, right? But I also love when I feel like I need that extra accountability or I need somebody to help me with the variation on the exercises so I don't trigger the, the, the injuries that I have, right? I can turn the camera on and I get individualized attention from the trainer. Like they are physically showing me how to do the exercise. If I don't understand something, even if I don't have the camera on, I can put it in the chat. I don't understand how to do that. Is there an alternate exercise? And they are physically on the spot helping me out every day other than Sunday if I want it. $25 a month is what I pay. You can't even beat that, right? So they are offering a free a free camp, which runs through the month. I wonder why this is shaking so bad. I don't have this on anything that shakes. Oh, I think I'm I think my chair is bouncing this every time I get all excited. <laughs> anyway, they're offering a free camp that runs through January, and you want to sign up before the free slots are gone, right? But um what what they're doing, what they're doing is for every person that signs up for the free camp, they're sending enough donation to plant 10 trees. All right. So if you've been down in the dumps, you know, you want to get back into shape, but you don't feel like you've got the time, message me your email address and I'll forward you the email with the discount code. I put a link in the thing, but it's a crazy long, it's like holiday something or other 20 million numbers that I'm not going to remember. Right. <laughs> So if you can find it in the um in the in the comments or you can find it in the code of this. Um when you get the free month of workouts, they'll plant the, the 10 trees today only. The free months of workouts is good until January starts, but today only they'll plant the 10 trees. So you can do that. So like you you can feel good. You can feel good about helping the environment and yourself all in one fell swoop. Now, 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 you know, are are, are they are they good people? I'm sure they are. But I also know that they know if they get you in there for free and you see the results, you do the workouts, you'll, you'll stay on and pay. It's a win, 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 a win for them, a win for you, a win for the environment. And again, a win for me too, because I only need two more referrals to level up. <laughs> I've leveled up. I've leveled up as far as I can without some more referrals. <laughs> so look, when you... You know, I got a, I got a thing from Amazon the other day. They said, you have to start putting, when you're doing referrals, you have to start putting that with all your Amazon links. I was like, oh my goodness, I got so many of them out there. It's going to take forever to do that. But I think I've been pretty clear about everybody that almost every link I post is a referral link or an affiliate link. And um, when you don't have a lot of money, you got to look for the win, win, win. OK, you've got to look for the ways to be a blessing without being a cursing to your family. You got to be creative and and, 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 a, and walk in abundance and trust that if you add value to this world from what you do have, then the money that you don't have will come. It's a spiritual principle. OK, now, look, I realize that some of what I said today, especially in the first video, is kind of harsh. I know. I know. But, you know, I love you. And, you know, I'm only sharing this with you because I made these same mistakes over and over and over. And they kept me from being where I should be. And I want to see you avoid those mistakes. I, I, I don't want it to take you 10, 11 years to get out of debt. I want you debt-free, leaving that toxic job by the end of next year, right? So who's with me on that? Now, now, maybe your job isn't toxic, but it's holding you back from being able to do what you know you are called to do. And who's ready to cut those ties and put a plan in place to leave that nine to five by the end of next year, right? Who's ready to be in business for themselves? Who's ready to be home with their kids? Who's ready to spend your day doing something that makes a difference? And if you want that, I mean, if you really, really want that, what I'm saying will help you get there. I know, I know it's not fun. 
I know. I know that first time you don't give everybody at church a Christmas gift at the Christmas party. Somebody going to give you some side eye and people going to be petty. But you know what? Because we're because because we're all imperfect. Right. Like we wouldn't have churches if we didn't have imperfect people. And we're all you know, we all we all come in there to get to be, get better. Right. Um, we don't we, I'm not talking about walking in sin, though. That's a whole different thing. Uh, but <laughs> Sorry. y'all. But you know what? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. These people that you're so worried about what they think of you, if you don't give this and if you don't pay that and you don't buy these gifts with money you don't have, we weren't even talking about buying gifts, but you know, I'm on it now. So we're just going to be on it. And then I need to get to this ribbon cutting. They don't pay your bills. They don't have a heaven or a hell to put you in. So let them alone and do something today that your future self will thank you for. Like I said earlier, when you don't have a lot of money, you've got to look for the win, win, win. You've got to be creative and abundant and trust that you've added value to this world from what you have, the money and the other things you don't have will come. Trust the process and it will come to pass. I believe in you and I believe that you are called to walk in abundance. I'm JJ Conway. I want to thank you all for watching. And if you're listening on the Building Wealth, Pod, uh, well, Building Wealth Together podcast, I want to thank you as well. Your continued support means so much to me. Y'all take care and be blessed.